If you've ever had an interest in beekeeping, there are some workshops that are coming up in the weeks uh, to come. This morning, Ansley Watson is there <laughs> to give us more details. I like that. Safety first, Ansley, safety first. <laughs> Yeah, this beekeeper's <laughs> veil is quite handy. I know that I wear, I'm actually a beekeeper myself, so it is something that you definitely want to wear when you're out there with your bees. But we're gonna be talking about a, a workshop that's coming up for beginner beekeepers. So if you've never beekeep before and you really are interested in it, this workshop is something that'd be wonderful to do. And then in a couple more weeks after that, an advanced beekeeping workshop is for those who are already in beekeeping, beekeeping and just want to uh, make themselves more knowledgeable in that. So bees are super important. I think these are going to be great workshops. So stay with us. We're going to be talking to a professional beekeeper here in a little bit to tell us more about that. Reporting live and Bruce Crossing, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. All right, thank you very much, Ansley, and uh, be having fun out there for us. So uh, <laughs> it is a little bit different. We don't quite have the bees out there right now. Yeah, it's a quite. little bit cold for them. Yeah. Welcome it, back. We're coming up on 10 after the hour. There are some beekeeping workshops coming up locally to tell you more about the world of honeybees and how you can get started. This morning, Ansley Watson is telling us more about what you can expect and what life as a beekeeper is all about. Good morning, Ansley. Good morning, Vicki. Wow, what a great opportunity to come to these workshops and learn how to be a beekeeper. Joining me this morning is Les McBean, who is an experienced beekeeper himself. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. You're very welcome. And I'm also joined with Frank Wardinsky, who is the MSU Extension Educator. Thank you as well for being with us. Thank you very much. So what a great morning. Les, you've been beekeeping for, what, 30 years, you yes, told 30 me? 30 years. And you're teaching these classes. How long have you been teaching these classes for? I guess about 20 years now. Why do you do it? I think that's the main question. Like, why did you even get into beekeeping? What's the interest about it? Well, I enjoyed it because it was something I could do locally. Uh -huh. um, there are not a lot of jobs here in the western UP. And uh, um, it just happened that uh, the person that I bought the business from was turning 80 years old and wanted to sell. So I thought I'd give it a try. And it's been 30 years now. And it's been a good profession. Mm -hmm. And I love beekeeping, so I sold most of my business a couple of years ago, but I kept, I keep 30 colonies yet and make a little bit of honey, and I, I just really enjoy doing it. And I enjoy spreading the word, too. Mm -hmm. uh, hobby beekeeping is booming right now. So um, we have a really good time at the workshops. It's a lot of fun. There's a beginner's workshop, and then later in a few weeks, there'll be an advanced That's workshop. Correct, yeah. So you're going to be meeting a lot of beginners who don't even sure. know how to start. What right. would be the first things that you'd probably talk about in this workshop? Probably the first thing is um, the bees. You know, there are a variety of bees, different kinds of bees. Some are better here in the UP, suited mm -hmm. for here in the UP. And one of the most important things, too, is the equipment. Mm -hmm. um, what is needed up here in the north and what isn't needed. And uh, we supply, the, I should say, the, bee, the major bee supply companies give us their catalogs. So we pass those out at both classes. And those are very valuable resources as well. Yeah. What we were just looking at was actually a box that mm -hmm. your first brood, your package, would come in. Let's talk about yeah. this box okay. here. This is a three pound package, what we call three pound packages. Bees are sold by the pound. Mm -hmm. There's roughly 3,500 to 4,000 bees per pound. Wow. So there will be 10,500 to 12,000 bees in this package, which comes from, I get mine from California. This is a feeder can, and this is the queen cage underneath here, if you can see that. The queen comes separately in her own little cage okay. because it's a, it can be a rough journey from California. It takes about three days, so that kind of protects her. Mm -hmm. The bees will cluster around the queen and around the feeder can, and this will keep them alive for about a week. And then when, um, I'll, I will be de demonstrating how to install a package and how to keep it alive. That's kind of a critical, critical thing up here in the UP, is um, many people, we usually get our bees about the end of April, and it can be pretty bad weather. I've, many times I've set bees out in the snow. And you have no choice. You can't really keep them. You have to get them out of this package and into a regular hive. Okay. Wow. Well, going over to Frank here. Frank, the extension kind of helps put these workshops on. Maybe tell us when are these happening, times, places, things like that. Uh, the beginning beekeeper workshop will be uh, uh, April 12th. Um, and they're all day sessions, uh, started about 10 o'clock in the morning, go to about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon. <clears throat> and uh, they're, they're held at the Ewan Trout Creek High School. And uh, you can call our office uh, if you want to get registered. They're about 25, they're $25 per session. 
uh, to do that. And uh, then two weeks later on the 26th of March will be the uh, advanced beekeeper workshop. Okay, so the first one is March 12th and the second one is March 26th? Correct. Okay, all right, well stay with us guys because we're gonna get a closer look at more equipment and how to take care of your bees, especially in this climate during the winter time. Reporting live in Bruce Crossing, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. All right, thank you very much, Ansley. That's really cool. And for those who are heading out the door, you welcome know, back. We'll for all of you out there, maybe interested in beekeeping or already doing beekeeping, there are two workshops coming up here to learn more a little bit about it. So Ansley Watson is joining us from Bruce Crossing this morning with a little more on that. Good morning, Ansley, and as always, behave. Good morning, Sam and I always behave, you know that. <laughs> this morning I'm joined by an experienced beekeeper, Les McBean. Thank you for being with us this You're morning. Welcome. My pleasure. So you've been teaching these workshops for beginners and advanced for quite some time, and you're telling me that actually people will come to these workshops, learn, start a beehive, and then actually get to sell their honey, right? Um, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if they get a surplus crop, that many people sell a little bit to mm -hmm. help offset the expenses. Mm -hmm. Hobby beekeeping is booming right now, and it can be kind of expensive to get into it. So you're telling me that there's a huge process in actually getting the honey from the hive off into bottles. So talk, walk us through this process here. Okay, well, the honey comes in from the, high, uh, from the field in the honey boxes, mm -hmm. which is the, it calls the honey super. This will hold about 42 pounds of honey. They go, I'll set them here, and they go over here. This is a, a wax melter. Yeah. The, and this is a, excuse me, this is a hot knife. I use a hot knife now, but you cut off the, the, the comb. This is a little bit different, but you cut that off with the hot knife. It slides underneath here. This is water jacketed and heated. So the honey slides underneath here, and, and the caps, this is called caps, mm -hmm. this, that right oh, there. Oh, look at that. It, and which are edible. Beeswax is edible. It'll, it slides underneath here and the caps rise up from the heat and hit the heating grate and the pure beeswax flows out the back and honey will flow out here as it levels out. Okay. And then as I uncap one or many, I, they go over here and this is a drip tank and they set in the drip tank. This box isn't on here at the time. Mm -hmm. They set in here when I fill this up then I go over to, this is the extractor. Yeah, and then so how, show us how this extractor works. This thing is pretty fancy. And then it's, it's a nice unit, yes. And the, the frames go in here, and they set in there, and it'll hold 12 of them, and you fill it up. And once it's full, close it up, turn it on, on low, and I go back and I'll start on capping some more, and then, um, I'll come over here and turn it up a little higher uh -huh. and in two or three minutes and it's, they're totally extracted. And then after it gets to a certain point, I put a bucket underneath here and the honey flows out into the bucket and then the bucket goes into a, either a barrel or stays in the bucket. Oh, wow. On a typical year, you actually used to sell commercially and now you're kind of lower. Yeah. How much honey do you get average? Average per colony? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with that. Um, well, a good average here is about 80 pounds. Okay. Um, last year I had an average of 95 pounds, which is probably above state average. But then the two years prior to that, we had terrible years. I had an average of 50 pounds two years ago, and three years ago I had an average of about 30 pounds. And some people were experiencing no honey at all. Okay. So you're at the, at the elements. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, you need a, a, a strong, healthy colony to produce surplus honey. But our surplus honey season up here in the UP is very short. The third week in June until about the end of, April, uh, end of August, is when our surplus honey comes in. Bee season is from when you get your bees, usually in late April until the end of October. But the actual honey season itself, when the honey flow, we call mm -hmm. it, is on, is pretty much July and August. So okay. if, the, if it's cold, rainy, wet, uh, too dry, all those are factors that in, are involved with your, uh, how much honey you produce. So okay. you can have bad years and have good years, and hopefully it balances out somewhere. But Back when I was doing it full time, I would run three or four hundred colonies. I would get twelve to fifteen thousand pounds wow. of honey a year. 
now it's more like two or three thousand pounds of honey uh, that I'm semi-retired. Yeah, from. yeah. And talking about the elements, you know, obviously the UP gets a lot colder up mm -hmm. here. Do you wrap the hive up to keep them warm? I know bees do typically still stay warm, but how do you do that for the winter time? Well, there's a variety of commercial wraps that you can use, and there's a lot of uh, homemade concoctions that you could say that uh, years ago they used to use tar paper hmm. to wrap them but uh, and there's a lot of different ways there's a called a Canadian wrap where you put a bunch of them together and wrap them together um, but I I recommend actually a commercial wrap from a, a company called Man Lake okay and they have a very nice it's only ten dollars it's a very nice wrap that you can put straw around it and it keeps your bees warm there's pros and cons to wrapping your hive because when you wrap them, they stay more active. When they're more active, they're going to eat more honey or more food. And a bee colony needs about 50 pounds uh, for winter stores. Okay. All right, thank you. And real quick, I'm also joined by the education educator for the Extension Office, uh, Frank Wardinsky. Tell us whenever these workshops are starting and what times. Uh, the beginning beekeeping workshop will be uh, March 12th at the Ewan Tr Trout Creek High School. Uh, starts at 10 o'clock Eastern time. We'll go all the way through like 4, 4.30 uh, into the afternoon. The advanced beekeeping workshop is March 26th uh, at the Ewan Trout Creek High School also. Uh, you can sign up and, uh, for these uh, classes by calling the Michigan State University Extension Office in Ontonagon. And uh, um, it's $25 per session. All right, thank you so much, Frank and Les been a pleasure reporting live in Bruce Crossing, Ansley Watson, and we'll be back with more of your TV6 Morning News after the break.